Hey everybody, Frick the Tech Guru here, and today we are going to make a custom arcade one-up cabinet for under $300. If you're not familiar with these units, they are replica arcade cabinets that you can buy from places like Amazon and Walmart that look like and feel like the old arcade cabinets with all your favorite classic games on them. The one I have here is a Mortal Kombat 2 cabinet. It has Mortal Kombat 1, Mortal Kombat 2, and Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. That is, of course, until I did modifications uh, to it, and you can see all those modifications in the previous video I did. But today we are going to do this all said and done for under $300. This machine uh, probably cost me around closer to $500, $550, but we can do the whole process, I believe, for under $300, and I'm going to show you how. Now, the unit we are going to use is the Asteroids unit, and at the time of making this video, this unit is on sale at Walmart.com for only $164.99. That's not all you need though. You need other parts to uh, do these modifications. I'm going to show you what you need. First of all, you need a computer to run the new system. And the one I recommend is the Raspberry Pi. This is the Raspberry Pi Model 3 B+. And uh, it's just a small computer if you're not familiar with these guys. They're just a small computer. They have many different uses. Uh, you can use them as media players, emulation stations. Uh, in this case, that's what we're going to use it for as the brains of our custom arcade unit. Um, you're also going to need with that, you're going to need to buy a micro SD card. Oh, uh, the cost of the Raspberry Pi is $35. You're also going to need a micro SD card. I would recommend at least 128 gigabytes. Um, this one, the 128 gigabytes, only $15 right now on Amazon. And again, the bigger size memory card that you get, the more games that you're going to be able to fit uh, on the device. Um, next up, you're going to need uh, joysticks and buttons. Now, you can do this modification and save a couple extra dollars by using the buttons and the joysticks that actually come with the arcade one-up units, but if you're going to install the Raspberry Pi, then you also need a couple of these. These are, these are USB arcade button controllers. Now, these plug in via USB to the Raspberry Pi and these are about ten dollars a piece so you need two of them you need one for each player but if for only twelve dollars more you can actually get the whole kit so you get two of these along with all the cables and you get brand new uh, buttons buttons <laughs> buttons and joysticks so the whole kit comes with a set of blue buttons set of red buttons comes with two brand new joysticks and the reason I recommend spending that extra twelve dollars is because the buttons and joysticks that it, these things come with are very low quality. Uh, they're basically junk. So you can replace the whole thing, $32.99 uh, to do that. And uh, like I say, that's highly recommended. If you want to spend eight more dollars than that, you can actually get LED buttons uh, that uh, you see here on my uh, Mortal Kombat uh, cabinet. So you need new buttons and joysticks. Another thing you need is this guy right here. This is a monitor control board. Now, the way that these things are set up when you buy them is that uh, they plug into the uh, unit which is all controlled uh, underneath the joystick. What we do is we replace that unit and we throw in one of these guys and this allows the monitor that the arcade one up comes with to take any HDMI, DVI or uh, VGA input. So you can even hook a computer up to these, anything HDMI, you can hook a game console, whatever you want to do and uh, it has an audio output so you're going to need to uh, you're going to need one of these cables this is a 3.5 millimeter to RCA so the white and the reds RCA cable so you're going to need one of those this guy here is uh, $31.99 and these things are only five bucks now as far as what you plug those audio cables into you're going to need to buy one of these this is a mini stereo uh, amplifier and what this will do is it will allow you to use the speaker that comes with the Arcade 1UP. It'll allow you to use it uh, with the Raspberry Pi. So you're going to need one of these. These are only $10 as well. And other than that, that's pretty much it. You do need to buy uh, another DC adapter. This is a 12-volt, uh, um, 3 amp battery. This is, unfortunately, the, uh, the stereo amplifier does not come with one of these. So you need this to power that. The... Um, monitor is powered by the cord that actually comes with the arcade one up so you don't need to buy another one of those so and these are about ten dollars so all in all uh all those parts 
and everything with the Asteroids cabinet is $297. Now we're going to uh, build it, put it all together, and see how it works. I'm going to start by taking this out of the box. I'm not going to do this on camera, but I'm going to take this out of the box, build it the way that it was meant to be built uh, by itself, and then I'm going to show you how we add the modifications uh, later. I'm not going to go into too much detail how we do that. If you want to know how to customize your own arcade one-up machine, uh, check out the video. <coughs> excuse me. Check out the video from ETA Prime on uh, YouTube. He has the best explanation of how to do the whole thing. So anyway, let's get this started, and uh, we'll take it from there. We'll see you soon. Okay, so I just finished uh, assembling the arcade one-up unit, and in my opinion, it's actually one of the better-looking machines. I like the uh, design of it. It's really 80s, 70s actually in its looks. Looks really cool. Now the next challenge is converting this joystick layout to a two player six button each side uh, layout. So the next thing I got to do before I start drilling any holes is I got to get rid of all of the holes or all of the buttons that are there right now. And then so we're going to do that and then I'll tell you what I'm going to do next. All right, so I got all the buttons off, I got the speaker off, and now I need to drill more holes to make this a full control pad. Now one thing that I was worried about and I wasn't sure is the size of this hole uh, over on the side. It's obviously too big to fit a regular size button, so I may just put the spinner back in there. I'm not sure. Uh, we'll see how everything else goes. What I was planning to do is drill a hole here for the joystick and then do three buttons across uh, and then three buttons up here th um, or three buttons down here. What I may have to do because of the limited space, this is where joystick number two is going to have to go. Uh, I'm going to have to do joystick, two buttons, two buttons, two buttons, and then joystick, two buttons, two buttons, two buttons. Again, if this was a regular size hole, I could just put a button here. There would just be a little bit of a, a gap there, but uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to be able to do with this. Probably nothing, to be honest with you. And then I could put two regular buttons up here. And I take the uh, on and off button and volume up and down, uh, volume low and high buttons out because they're useless after we install the modifications. So what I do is I usually just drill this uh, a bigger hole, make it round, and then I uh, turn it into the hotkeys or the insert coin buttons. So that's what I plan to do. We're going to take this down to uh, my nearest wood shop and we're going to start drilling the holes and uh, see what we can do with it. All right, everybody, so we have everything wired. The first thing you're gonna notice is that I don't do uh, any cable management whatsoever. And the reason for that is because there's a back plate that goes on this, covers everything, so I really don't feel the need. Um, everything sort of, you know, can move around a little bit. It doesn't matter if it moves around, it's okay. The only thing I tape down is the power supply here, so it doesn't move. And the reason for that is because when the plate goes on here, I cut a hole in the corner like this so that you can still uh, access the power button to turn it on and off. I also cut a hole right about here around this guy because this is the thing that uh, controls the volume. So just to kind of give you a brief explanation of how everything kind of works together. Again, if you're looking to do this yourself, follow ETA Prime's video. Uh, link is in the description and uh, he'll show you how to do it. But anyway, th this is the first thing that you have to install. This is the VGA or sorry, the monitor controller. These cords come out of the monitor originally and they're um, when you buy it, it comes uh, mounted here and it's plugged into the, the computer that handles the Arcade 1-Ups uh, system. So this, play, this uh, device here allows you to basically plug anything into that screen. Um, you have the cord here that provides the power and the signal. And then it comes with this guy here that I just mount to the back of this. This is uh, the buttons to control the monitor settings, whether it be brightness or uh, source or anything like that. 
Once you have this installed, uh, you have to plug it in with a power supply. Uh, you can use the power supply that comes with the Arcade 1UP, so that's not going to change anything. Uh, an HDMI cable, you can also use DVI and VGA. And then this cord here is a 3.5 millimeter to RCA that uh, takes the audio from the HDMI and wires it into this guy right here, the uh, stereo amplifier. So that's what that is used for. The stereo amplifier, if you can see here, sorry if it's a little shaky, um, that speaker right there that you see the, the yellow wires coming out of, that is the speaker that comes with the Arcade 1UP. Some people who do these custom builds, they install their own speaker, which is certainly fine. Again, we're trying to keep it cheap here. So I'm using the one speaker that it comes with. Uh, these yellow wires that come out of it, you just clip the ends where the uh, little adapter is, and then they are just regular speaker wires, and they go into the amplifier basically like any other stereo receiver. And then it has three knobs, one for bass, one for volume, and one for treble. Again, you have to make this access accessible because uh, this is what controls the volume now. You can no longer control the volume from the... Uh, from the control board, so keep that in mind. And because the wires are so short, uh, I can only bring it to about here. That's why I have to cut the hole here, uh, which I'll show you at the end. All right, so these two are the USB control boards for the buttons and the joysticks. They are wired, as you can see underneath. Each button has its own wires. There's the joystick uh, there, and then there's another joystick and set of buttons. They're all wired each to their own uh, USB control board. Now you'll read this on uh, forums and you'll see it in the ETA Prime videos that they have to be wired the exact same way, meaning the buttons that you set in the menus will have to be plugged in to the same spots as they are on each controller. So just keep that in mind or else uh, sometimes you press a button on one side and it will actually trigger it on the other. So just be careful of that. You have a USB cord coming out of these and then of course they go into the Raspberry Pi which runs just about everything. The Raspberry Pi has four USB slots. Um, I have that wireless dongle for a keyboard that I have plugged into it. And then uh, you'll see over here the power supply and the HDMI cord for that. I don't find with the Raspberry Pi 3 you need uh, too much cooling. I have some heat sinks on the processor there. As you can see, I find that is fine. I have tested this with the new Raspberry Pi 4 though and it seems to be overheating a little bit, uh, so I'm looking for some proper cooling for that uh, when that comes. Um, other than that, we have a dedicated power bar here. You need three uh, plugs. You need the one for the Raspberry Pi, one for the monitor, and then one for the uh, stereo amplifier as well. But anyway, that is the back. We are going to fire it up now and make sure everything works. Okay, so we're up and running now. Everything looks to be working great. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, when I was going through all the things that you would need, I used a 128 gigabyte um, micro SD card. If you want to save yourself even more money, you could get away with a 32 gigabyte, but obviously the bigger it is, the more games you're going to have. This, in my opinion, is the best uh, Arcade 1UP micro SD Raspberry Pi image that you can get. I'm going to put the link in uh, in the description. I believe it's from somebody called Wolfenos. Uh, and he does he didn't design the menus the, the menus is from uh, or the theme that's running here is called Phil's doodles But it has the best games and I'm just going to quickly go uh, through we have arcade games MAME You can slow down the video if you want to see what's actually here, but there are a ton of games a ton of systems on here including uh, like it has Nintendo, it has the Japanese Nintendo games, it also has Nintendo clones, and it does this for every uh, system. So it's basically hacks of, of different games in there. Virtual Boy, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Super Nintendo, Game Gear, Master System, Sega Genesis, Sega CD, TurboGrafx-16, uh, PlayStation. I actually toyed around with this. I added some more PlayStation games because it was probably my all-time favorite system. So I added a little more PlayStation games and deleted some of the other ones that I don't play. Then your settings. And then he has it organized by, you know, different Space Fighters, custom collections, you know, Mega Man, Mario, uh, and then all the games. And then, uh, I don't know if you could see here, but uh, yeah, there's over 9,000 games total. An amazing collection. Works really good. If I want to play a game, for example... Uh, oh, and all the games have descriptions, they have videos, 
really, really cool. So if I want to play a game, uh, and of course I can, I'm using the joysticks here to go through the menus. And if I want to play a game, I just press the, uh, the button and it will load. I really like this cabinet design. I mentioned that before, but it's really cool. It's really 80s, really retro. And the game loads up uh, perfectly. Sorry for the reflection. I have quite a bit of light in here. So all you have to do to insert a coin is you press the button that you set for your hot hotkey. You have to set up the, con the controls yourself uh, with the menu. But if I press this button here, it'll insert a core. I just press start. And then uh, everything works good. Just to test it, I'm going to insert another quarter on the other side. Press start. And I have second player as well. So there you have it. The complete arcade one up, one up custom build for under three hundred dollars. Easily the cheapest uh, cheapest way you're going to do it. Like I say, you could save some money with the micro SD card. You could try and save some money by using the joystick and buttons that that it comes with. Uh, but overall, um, honestly, this is this is the best, the cheapest way to do it. I recommend replacing the buttons that it comes with because it's not uh, they're not that great. The Obvious disadvantages to doing it, at least with this control board, uh, because I had to drill the holes, so that takes some time. We're left with this, which now serves absolutely no purpose. As I mentioned when I was doing this, when you take this off, it's a big, much larger hole than the joystick button, so you can't fit a regular joystick button. You can't fit a joystick in there. So unfortunately, that has to stay unless you replace the entire control board. You can buy a, an empty one on eBay for about uh, 20 bucks. So that's a possibility. And then you can just put the buttons in. It's a lot easier. I'd probably recommend that. But again, it makes it a little more expensive. Um, the other disadvantage with doing this is the amount of room between this set of buttons and the other joystick. So if you're playing two players, you really have to come to the side and try not to interfere with the second player. Uh, but overall, I'm, I'm very happy with the build. I think it came out really well, especially considering the amount of money and time that we put into it and uh, it's a perfect addition to any man cave anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this and uh, good luck with making your own arcade uh, by all means uh, shoot me some comments uh, and let me know what you did if you did it any cheaper and uh, you know some some of your tips anyways have a good day